Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to tell you a little bit about the history uh, of the CCKM, how it started, or maybe I should say how over a period of many decades it did not start. How do I the next one? Oh, okay, great. Let me start in the beginning because uh, chemistry, I think, is as, as old as, as mankind. Uh, so you expect that already in the very beginning there would be some attention to, uh, to, to measurements in that field. But even in, by the end of the uh, 18th uh, uh, century, uh, when the meter and the kilogram were developed by deriving them from uh, a part of the meridian, uh, nothing was mentioned about uh, chemistry. And also in our country in 1820, the first country in the world where the kilogram meter system became introduced by law as the only unique measurement system, nothing was said about chemistry. And also not in 1875 when the meter convention was established Again, nothing said about chemistry, just focusing on the kilogram and the meter. And also later on, when in 1921, the meter convention was broadened and electrical standards and, and other uh, un uh, units and, and measurement standards were brought in, nothing was said about the chemistry. And only, and when the SI was created in, in 1960, no words about chemistry. It's only in 1971 when proposed by the IUPAC, IUPAP and ISO that the mole was introduced as the seventh base unit in the SI system. But again, it did not mean anything. It was mentioned and that was it. It does not mean that there were, was no attention at all in the world on, on chemistry. Already in the 1842 and later on in 1871, in a few countries, institutes like the LGC and the BAM were uh, established, and they had some. Uh, they were focusing on, on chemical issues, say, eh? and they had, did some measurements, but not really metrology in that field. And when the PTB or the, its forerunner PTR was established, it was focusing just on physics. Then, around 1900, when NPL and NBS were established, they had something on chemistry in it, but it was mainly focusing again on standardization and testing, and not really on, on metrology and chemistry. That only started, came up more and more by NBS in those days, and the uh, European Commission's Bureau Communautaire de Référence in the 70s, when there became more feeling and more need for having reference materials, although in many cases they were not really traceable to the SI, but it were consensus values. In the CIPM, sometimes in the past they had a discussion. In 1968, even before the base unit of the mole was introduced, uh, Dr. Estin in those days, the director of NBS, mentioned in, in a member of the CIPM, suggested to the CIPM that there is an issue, maybe, metrology and chemistry, but the reaction of the CIPM was, no, that's nothing for us, that's, that's not, can't be done, and it's not, not real physics. So only in the course of the 70s, and in particular later on in the 1980s, a lot of activities developed triggered by uh, the World Trade Organization, uh, and, uh, uh, international trade uh, uh, relations, uh, the technical barriers to trade, and the needs of industry and traders. So institutes like NBS and the European Commission Bureau of Reference, they started to become more active. But still, in those days, the CIPM was not really convinced about its role. I remember very well in the late 80s to have had discussions with Dr. Williams, at those days the director of the LGC, and myself uh, with the director of the BIPM here, Dr. Quinn, about the need to do something. But that did not work out immediately so well. 
And that's the reason why, as none of the metrology organizations took on board metrology and chemistry, that we decided with a few other institutes, in particular in Europe, to establish Eurachem, in fact, with the aim to organize comparisons and try to establish comparability through traceability. That, uh, but in, in the meantime, also discussion in the CIPM went on. And finally, although not convinced by all the members of the CIPM, but the CIPM decided to organize a feasibility study. And that was led by Dr. John Lyons, uh, director of uh, NIST in those days, and being himself a chemist. But I think the idea was, or the expectations of the members of the CIPM were still, nothing will come out, so we will forget again about it. But a little bit came out. In particular, one uh, comparison uh, organized by my own institute, uh, one of these feasibility studies was on gas mixtures. And as we had with a few other institutes like NPL and NIST, already some experience in that field, the results were not that bad at all. The, the measurement uncertainty is larger than we are used now, but it worked quite well. The second study led by NIST on heavy metals in water was a little bit more difficult. The first exercise did not run so well, but after having improved the quality of the materials and a, a better, much better pro, uh, written down procedure, the results were uh, quite, quite satisfactory. So the CIPM decided to create the CCQM in 1993. At the same time, URHM had looked further around the world and with the interest expressed by institutes like Eagle in Australia and uh, the Hong Kong Government Laboratory by Dr. Ting, we had already, we were able to establish uh, SciTech and uh, we had very good meetings over there in the Asia Pacific area. So finally we started in 1993 and these are the two results of the comparisons, not too bad at all. This picture you have seen already, the first meeting, but the first two meetings uh, were not, well, were, were not easy. The, our task were, like in other words, still is advising the CIPM on matters related to the accuracy uh, of uh, quantitative chemical measurements and traceability to the SI, of course, Organ coordinating the activities of the NMIs by organizing comparisons, stimulating the, uncert the understanding, in particular also of the concept of measurement uncertainty, uh, 30, 40 years ago, that concept of measurement uncertainty was not at all so well understood at, as it is nowadays. And of course, advising the BIPM on a possible program of work. Again, there was a lot of opposition against that, that idea, but it was on the table. After 1999, clearly, the, when the CIPM MRA was established, uh, we got an enormous boost to a much further development of the, the, whole, the whole field. The first focus in our meetings, the first two meetings in 95, 96, a little bit in 97, was on primary measurement. Coming, the, the, most of the people coming from the NMIs, coming from the physics uh, area, they thought that there should be one primary method, a top primary method, and by that primary method, you realize the, uh, the mole, and, and that's it. Then you have established traceability. But clearly, in the area of metrology and chemistry, it's so much more complicated that that didn't work out. But it took us some time to, to realize and go through that. But finally, uh, when we realized that there is so much complexity in, in, in defining, measuring the quantity of specific chemical entities and chemical matrices, where there are so many chemical entities and so many chemical matrices and mass fractions also ranging over 12 or more decades, uh, we, uh, it became clear uh, that we had to, to choose another route of development. And as I said already, most of the NMIs were f focusing on the physics. They were focusing on electrochemistry and gas mixtures. But most of the organic and inorganic experience and knowledge was not directly in the NMIs, but in many other institutes. So we had to bring all these other 
organizations on board as, as well. And that really kicked off when the, we uh, decided to establish the CCCOM, the first four CCCOM working groups in 1997. Uh, that really, the, that was a good development and, and we got the right experts in those working groups and they were able to, to really uh, get it uh, off the ground. The first comparisons on, on uh, gas mixtures and, and PPDE in fish oil and uh, monumental standard solutions and pH, there are some of the results and you will find them all in the database of course. I mentioned already that in 1999, there was an enormous uh, development by the establishment of the CIPM MRA. Due to all the developments in the world, the international trade agreements and uh, laboratory accre accreditation systems organized all around the world and, and internationally coordinated, uh, there was a clear pressure that there has to be also a system of internationally recognized traceability of physical chemical measurements coming, delivering, delivered by the National Metrology Institute and other designated institutes. So <clears throat> when that CIPM MRA was signed, it became very clear that uh, we had really to work hard and get an overview on paper, on, on in a database, of the best measurement capabilities of the participating NMIs and designated institutes. As a result, because now it really came to the point that what we publish would be a true reflection, would be defendable, uh, would be harmonized, uh, we should treat all the participants in an equal way. So there was a strong feeling that we must have another CCQM working group on key comparisons and CC, uh, CMC quality. And that the first one was led by Dr. Samurgeon. And the results, you, are, you know them, they are well uh, visible in the database of the, uh, of the, the KCDB, of the uh, BIPM. <coughs> But there was more in the field, more uh, areas to be covered. Already, in the, rather in the beginning, there was a lot of activity by a limited number of NMIs, but important enough to look into on surface analysis. So, stimulated by Dr. C of uh, NPL, uh, we started also after some preliminary studies, a working group on surface analysis. And the same happened in the field of biological analysis. There was activities by a number of designated institutes and some NMIs on nucleic acids and proteins and, and even cells. So also there, after a preliminary study, we established a CCCOM working group on biological analysis. Two areas, again different from the other working groups we had, and with their own startup difficulties, but they succeeded slowly. And in this, in this very moment, we know that, that uh, in particular in the biological area, that has been broadened and uh, there are even now uh, three working groups. So this all developed quite well. And that there was a need in the area of of bioanalysis became very clear also uh, by the, the creation by the European Commission of an EU directive on in vitro diagnostic uh, an analysis, requiring traceability to standards of higher order. It did not explicitly say what that was, but it was clear that there is a need to uh, improve the quality of clinical measurements in order to reduce the cost of healthcare and, and deliver better healthcare services to all the patients. And there was also the danger by that uh, uh, directive requiring traceability to standards of higher order that if we would not be able to establish on a global scale a system of recognized traceability that there is, was easily enough uh, many reasons to create technical barriers to trade as the IVD industry comes from all around the world. First meetings we had with the WHO and the 
NIBSC in the UK, one of the major uh, uh, WHO uh, laboratories, did were not immediately successful. But uh, when we talked further with the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and with the International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, uh, it became clear that there was a real need and that by working together, we would be able to deliver something very useful, in particular by creating a reliable database of approved reference materials, reference measurement procedures, and a network of reference laboratories in laboratory medicine. So all the discussions uh, led to the establishment of the GCTLM in 2002 and the secretariat, uh, given the secretariat in the hands of the BIPM. I think that was an excellent choice, but I must, uh, we must recognize also the firm support that we still get from the IFCC in particular. So the database is well known and you can find it in, uh, at the BIPM uh, website again, the GCTLM database of reference materials and so on. Also in the same period, I think it became very clear how the traceability chain in the chemistry uh, would look to. There was a nice uh, table published by uh, the BIPM and uh, ISO in the standard 17.5.11 on the traceability chain coming from the base units through primary reference measurement procedures and uh, primary calibrators. And I think that's the level where the NMIs have to work and from there deliver their services, their traceability to the manufacturers, to the industry, labor accredited laboratories, and so on. So again, the question came back on primary methods and what, what is it? An excellent example, of course, is in, in the, the watt balance, primary method, and a silicon ball. So that are the two elements uh, which clearly uh, demonstrate, I think, the basis of all. In the chemistry, of course, it's very complicated. The graphimetry still is a clear primary method, but there are many other methods and technologies which are applied and are, can be seen as methods of higher order. But still, you need the best measurement procedure uh, for, to, to measure certain analytes in certain matrices, and you need very primary, pure, certified reference materials. I think we are well on track in realizing this, and that by that we can establish traceability to the SI, or if not yet possible, to other international agreed references. Why not? Also, in the scope of the uh, CIPM MRA, we had to uh, well to harmonize uh, all the all the elements like what is a measurement and what is a method-defined measurement. Measurement uncertainty, how do you calculate that? What are all the components you take into account also in the pre-preparation of the, the sample before you really start the measurement? What is a key comparison reference value? And degrees of equivalence, how do you calculate them? So it's not amazing that already somewhere in the beginning we uh, also established an ad hoc uh, key comparison reference value working group chaired by Dr. Cox, and they studied over many years, finally delivering a report, but still there was a lot of debate on, on how useful that report was and how we can do it. But I think it has all contributed to a better understanding, to a better harmonized approach, and by a more uniform uh, implementation of all our criteria. So a lot of work went on. But there's still more to do. So in the course of the uh, uh, first decade of this century, also the microbial uh, uh, area came up. The industry, there is a lot of health care and food safety issues, uh, which have to do with bacteria and viruses and, and all these other microbial issues. So also there was a clear need to improve the situation, as I said, for trade reasons, for healthcare reasons, for food safety reasons. So we started also as an ad hoc uh, working group, steering group, to, to 
to formulate some ideas uh, what how, what to do what should we do what could we do uh, is there a role for us uh, but i think as you will see where we are now yes the answer is again there is something to be done but together with all the ex experts from the other fields and that's not the only thing a complete different issue but still a lot of work to to be done is an accurate isotope ratio measurement Still, there is a lot to be done. It's an important issue. It became very clear when we talked about the redefinition of the, of the, the base units, uh, when we talk about the silicon ball and so on. You really need to know in detail also ICO, uh, about isotope ratio measurements. I mentioned already that on the, one of the tasks uh, on the table of the uh, CCQM was to advise the CIPM on a, um, a chemical metrology activity by the BIPM itself. There were a lot of people not at all convinced that that was a good idea and that that could be done even with a very small group because, as you know, the laboratories are relatively small compared to the, the, the laboratories in the big NMIs. On the other hand, there was a feeling that something had to be done. In order, the, the BIPM and the CIPM and the BIPM was not seen by the outside world as the logic partner speaking on behalf of the metrologist in chemistry. That they didn't have that name, physics, that was okay, but chemistry not. And I think it, uh, it was crucial has been crucial that the BIPM got their own staff with their own knowledge and experience in order to talk on behalf of all of us to other international organizations and stakeholder communities. So fortunately, at a certain moment in the year 2000, we, uh, the CIPM decided, okay, let us go also for a chemical metrology department. And we were so lucky to, lucky to get uh, Robert Wilgosh on board because I think he has done really an excellent and essential, crucial job. With the help of NIST, uh, we, the BIPM could start with ozone and air quality standards and also with the help of other institutes, uh, organize greenhouse gas comparisons and things like that. Later on, established uh, the GCTLM was uh, uh, the secretariat was uh, given to the BIPM and of course the executive secretariat of the CCQM. Later on also primary calibrators of complex organic compounds were added and also that field I think has proven to be to have developed uh, uh, wonderful. In the meantime also the activities have gone further and the uh, chemistry laboratory of the BIPM is visited by many scientists of all around the world. And that is as impressive as well, I must say. That's, uh, and, and that demonstrate that there is an added value here. That, uh, so 50 visiting scientists from 23 countries have worked here over the last four, five years. And that's really impressive and was never shown in the past. The focus of the BIPM chemistry department was on comparisons, improvements on, on ozone standards, and that uh, they have really uh, delivered improved performance, more accurate ozone cross-sections, new standards. The work has really been of importance and had added value. And also all the work done by the uh, uh, chemistry department on primary references for clinical diagnostic analysis uh, have been very successful and, and very useful, as well as working on supporting traceability in laboratory medicine. For example, also on the more complex uh, uh, molecules, which are still uh, expressed by the WHO international units, but uh, and, and they tell you something of what, what the uh, pharmaceutical does in your body, but it does not tell you what it is. And so the move from international units to SI traceable things, knowing what it is, is an in, in important development. And I'm quite convinced that we will see much more development in the future in, in this field, in this issue. The 
we felt over all the years that we have to work together with our stakeholder community because the NMIs originally had, didn't have so much chemistry on board. So we have organized over all the years many uh, workshops and symposia with our stakeholder communities like the WADA, the WMO, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the pharmaceuticals, uh, the IFCC, the, uh, the, the World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the Forensics, and the IUPAC, and all those working together, bringing in the experts of those institutes together with the metrologists, I think, are the basis of our of successful developments. And by learning, we learn from the others, and the others learn from us, our metrological approaches. And that same approach, I think, will apply also, for example, in the biological area, that I'm quite convinced that we will see the same. Just two examples of great workshops. Uh, we had in 2010 a, a joint uh, workshop with the World Meteorological Organization at uh, the headquarters in Geneva. And that was not only addressing the chemistry, by the way, but also physical measurements in climate change. And, but that was very successful, I think. And that has brought the two areas closer together again. <clears throat> and the same type of close cooperation we have had with the IUPAC when we talked about the redefinition of the mole. Also, that has cost, spent us several years, but finally we came together. So that's where we are now. I really showed that uh, picture already uh, much bigger. With a lot of working groups also that the bio area has been split up in uh, cellular analysis, nucleic acid, and protein analysis. Uh, we have an isotope ratio metrology working group and a strategic planning working group also that was needed because the growth of the uh, CCQM also required that we carefully look to how we operate and, and what we are doing. And there are still some other uh, issues on the table, like, for example, the task group on method-defined uh, measurements, also a very interesting uh, topic. The database has grown enormously. And these are floating numbers, but there are more than 7,000 CMCs, and they, come, they are delivered by 50 states and international organizations, underpinned by a large number of key comparisons and an increasing number of RMO uh, supplementary comparisons. And then there is the enormous amount of pilot studies, which is uh, also um, uh, on the table and delivers us a lot of uh, knowledge and information. There is a need, there was a need uh, for harmonizing what we are doing and, and talk about core key comparisons, key comparisons which have where the light shines as far as possible, uh, specialized key comparisons for special areas, and of course those pilot studies. In order to do that, we try to limit the number of work because the, the amount of work and the cost of the work is enormous, of course. Where needed, where possible, we also uh, compare the measurement capabilities, the measurement services as delivered, for example, of reference materials. I'm also proud to mention that uh, the cooperation with the regional metrology organizations and the accreditation bodies have nicely developed. Uh, there is more and more activities, chemical metrology activities by the RMOs, and we work together mainly also through the RMOs with the uh, uh, regional accreditation bodies and, uh, for example, linking uh, reference values to uh, to proficiency testing schemes organized by the uh, uh, regional accreditation bodies is a very meaningful, useful uh, exercise. The strategy, we develop more efficient, effective underpinning of CMCs, develop more CMCs where possible with a wider scope. We also have to look critically to the KCDB. Is that information there really what our customers like to see, what they can use? And of course, there is a lot of extra more work to be done in areas like healthcare, food safety, environment, energy, manufacturing, advanced materials. And our, my, all the next speakers 
they uh, will talk about that, I think, and give uh, really an overview of the, the nowadays achievements. So 25 years of CCUM, did we achieve what we had in mind? And my conclusion is certainly yes. We have been able to demonstrate that in the field of biochemical measurements, global comparability of measurement results and traceability to the SI, or if not yet possible, to another unique internationally great reference, can be realized. Realizing we are still a lot of work to be done. But I think we really have demonstrated that there is a clear reason to, to be there and to contribute. So 25 years of CCQM, metrology and chemistry is really essential for all what is on the nowadays political table, like climate change and energy transition, circular economies, innovation, and so on. I'd like to thank you all very, very much for all your work done, those in the beginning and those now here on the table. It's really great work and uh, I, I wish you a great future. This still will be exciting. Thank you very much.